I'm going to use another financial function in Excel. This time I'm going to use the future value function in order to figure out some future value, just what it sounds like. Um, to start off with, I'll create a basic uh, retirement fund calculator. That's a great example of the use of the future value uh, function. So I'll go ahead and call this um, retirement fund calculator. I'm going to put in some information that it, so that way we can use it for different people though. I want to put in um, my desired retirement age, current age, and I'll calculate years left to retirement. Now I need to tell Excel how much do I want to save per month and what is going to be my rate of return and then I'm going to have it calculate my future value. All right, so for retirement age, I'll put down 65. For my current age, I'll put down 35. Years left, I'm going to take retirement age minus current age. Monthly savings, I'll put in 500 a month. Rate of return, I'm going to put in 11%. The future value calculation, I'm going to go ahead and type this in kind of by hand. I'll type in equals FV parentheses. My rate is going to be my rate of return divided by 12. That's an annual rate of return. I want a monthly rate. Since I'm going to be making monthly investments, I'm going to have monthly compounding, so I need a monthly interest rate. So my interest rate divided by 12, my rate of return divided by 12, comma. Number of periods. I have 30 years left to retirement. I'm going to be making payments 12 times per year each month of each of those 30 years. So it's going to be the number of years times 12 the payment. Now I mentioned before when I was doing the payment calculator that uh, cash money that leaves you is an outflow, it's a negative. Uh, money that you get is an inflow, that's a positive. Well since I'm going to be investing money, I'm taking money and I'm sending it to my mutual fund, fund account, it's leaving me, I'm going to put in a negative and then my payment, which in this case is B5. Remember I'm not using actual numbers whenever I can use a cell reference to represent that number. So basically, if I save 500 a month for the next 30 years and get an average 11% annual return, I'm going to have about 1.4 million at age 65. And that's our basic future value calculator used to do a retirement fund calculator. Now, of course, in real life, we're never going to get an exactly 11% uh, return every year. We're probably never going to be able to save exactly 500 a month for 30 years straight. So you'd want to keep redoing this calculation periodically as things change. All right. Oh, by the way, this is also assuming starting from zero. Um, there's another parameter, there's a fourth parameter you can use in this function if you've already got some existing funds. Notice that present value in there. I'm going to assume in our scenario we're starting from zero, though. All right, so 1.4 million, I need to save 500 a month. Now we can play around with this, though. What if instead of being 35, what if I was only 25? So I'm 10 years younger means I'm going to have years left to retirement. It's going to go from 30 to 40. If I can still save 500 a month, that'll give me, give me to over 4.3 million. And that's pretty that's pretty good. Um, but I know when I was 25, I couldn't set aside 500 a month for this. Good news is, is if you start younger, if you're 25, you don't have to put in as much. I could put in maybe uh, 320 a month. That still gets me to 2.7 million. What about uh, 150 a month? 150 a month if I start at age 25 gets me to almost 1.3 million dollars. So you've got a bunch of different scenarios and these calculators are great for figuring out what you need to do in order to achieve a future goal. Now to be very precise that's where you have features like Goal Seek come in and I'll have a different video on using Goal Seek.